Hello, this is Les. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to run a couple more steam engines that I built. Um, these were built back in 1990. Um, I'm going to run this horizontal mill engine right here and this one here. And the green one here is the same as the red one, so I'm only going to run one of them. The red one is uh, has a sight glass on the boiler. Uh, that's about the only difference, that and the color. This engine right here, on the other hand, um, there, it's a little bit simpler to build an engine of this style because it has a side crank right here. So the connecting rod uh, is basically uh, just a matter of drilling a hole and getting it to fit over the end of the, uh, the crank. Then the flywheel's on the back side over here. And uh, it, it runs just fine. Um, it's just a different style. Uh, Whereas these other two engines have uh, center cranks right there. You can see the crankshaft. I actually ground the, uh, the crank discs a little bit to uh, somewhat balance the uh, engine. But um, it's a little, uh, on a small engine like this, kind of a difficult to, part to make is that split um, bushing that you need to build uh, for the to fit the crankshaft um, because it has to come apart so that I can fit in there and then be tightened on and with a very small part like that it is difficult to uh, make it um, precise and true and uh, what I learned uh, over the years is that the way to do it is you make the parts, um, in other words, you'd start out with this bearing right here, and then cut a little notch for the connecting rod, then file a little round spot for the, uh, for the bolts, and then wire that all together nice and square. And actually, I have longer pieces on here, and they're already drilled for the threading. Um, wire everything up and silver solder it, and then when it's uh, cooled, clean it off and tap the holes all the way through. And then, then you saw it apart with a very fine jeweler's blade. And then once you have it sawed apart, then you can re-drill the holes on the top with a larger drill bit. Um, and uh, so the bolt can pass through that part so it can move freely. And if you do it that way, you get a, uh, a very nice uh, split bushing on the end of the connecting rod. So I'm going to fill these engines with water and fuel. I already oiled them up and uh, I will start them up. These boilers are made from one and a half inch hard copper water pipe and they hold quite a bit of water, pretty, pretty good sized boilers. And they use sterno for fuel and that's the fuel pan right there so it, it holds quite a bit of sterno. So these engines will run for quite a while if I if I really fill them up with fill them full with water and sternal but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to 
fill them up part way and just uh, so I can run them for a short video. The engines have a 3 8 inch bore and 3 8 inch stroke and they're double acting engines. And they also have the slide valve. That should be more than enough sternum. A viewer told me that I should put stainless steel, um, stainless steel wool in the fuel pans, and then you can see if the flame is burning or not. And uh, I'll have to try that.
So you can see there's a lot of condensation from the steam. Um, steam exhaust right straight down um, on this engine right here. I put an exhaust pipe to kind of blow the steam out the back, which I probably should have done with the other engines too.